the evidence really doesn't support routine use of anaerobic coverage for those with aspiration pneumonia. And it's really interesting because in med school, we all learn this, and they're still teaching this, of course, that you have to do some type of anaerobic coverage. Now, on the boards, that's still the answer. The classic teaching is really just one that needs an update for real life. The classic teaching is that anyone with aspiration pneumonia needs anaerobes. So go big with that clindamycin or go big with that ampicillin sulbactrim. That's more commonly used, honestly. That's what we were all taught. But the modern data tells you a different story that standard community acquired pneumonia coverages like ceftriaxone plus azithromycin or doxycycline, even Leviquin, are all actually really effective at treating most cases of aspiration pneumonia. And what does the anaerobic coverage actually do then? Well, it increases your patient's risk for C. diff. So it's awkward. But in reality, we have to distinguish what is boards in real life here. So here's the honest breakdown. This is all you need to know for the boards. On the boards, you'll be expected to pick ampicillin, sulbactam, or clindamycin when they mention something like foul sputum or stroke with dysphagia or alcoholic patient and or unstable housing homeless, the classic like story for someone that has aspiration pneumonia. That is their signal that you are doing anaerobic coverage for sure. In real life, the vast majority is going to be ceftriaxone plus azithromycin or doxy. Again, your community acquired pneumonia coverage, completely reasonable. First line options in most cases. You're only going to escalate if you suspect the following three things, an abscess, an empyema, or necrotizing pneumonia. All three of those are basically the same thing. So anything that's like a self-contained infection, you're going to do that anaerobic coverage because it's a gas-forming organism, whatever. 